Welcome back to our epic BC overlanding adventure. Today's exploration is by far my favorite thing I have done in the Forester. After waking up at our beach campsite that we arrived the night before, we packed up our camp and headed up the mountain. Where after a long but extremely rewarding climb, we made it to the ridgeline that would take us to the fire lookout. After crossing the top of the ridge where we could look down at the lake we just came from, we met our first big obstacle of the day. A deep snowdrift that covered the trail. After pushing through the snow and a little bit of a tow, we made it to the top. But we weren't at the top for long as a storm came barreling down at us, providing us just enough time to get down the trail and onto the road before letting loose as we drove to our campsite for the night. As the storm clouds passed and the skies cleared up, we pulled into our spot for the night, located in some lakeside meadows. Join us today as we climb the mountain and explore everything this area has to offer. What is up and welcome back everyone to day three of our adventure, well the second full day, but if you've been following along you know that we've been camping at this awesome beach last night. So woke up to the beach, got a little bit of sun, it's already extremely hot as per usual in the Kootenays. So what we're going to do I think is we're going to cook up some breakfast and then go for a swim down there to cool off and then pack up and head out. And that's exactly what we did. After breakfast we went for a swim in the lake. And to my surprise, it was actually quite warm. Although, the same couldn't be said about the visibility, where you were unable to see more than a couple feet in front of you. And before we knew it, it was time to pack up and hit the trail. Well, the lake was actually pretty nice and warm. It was warm enough that on a hot day, you could probably sit in it um, all day and not be too cool. Um, but the visibility was like a foot. So I couldn't really see much, couldn't really dive down and see what's down there. So now it's time to go ahead pack up the tent, air down, and then we're gonna go, I think we're gonna go up this way. So yeah, let's get the tent packed up. I'm getting real quick at this, so five minutes and we should be all packed up and ready to go. So we're heading off the beach, we're heading to the trail just over there. Um, got packed up, got aired up, aired down, and um, got my batteries charging, so we should be good. Got Austin behind me and then the rest of the crew up front. But check it out, this is where we crossed before and it's already wet, so this is gonna be interesting. Definitely a really cool camping spot, only issue is because of the way the water is, it actually moves around a lot. Um, and actually, right now, as you can see, the, where we used to come through is now filling up with water. So you gotta be mindful of that when you're driving here. But yeah, I will meet you down at the trail. The trail out of the beach quickly became the trail up the mountain. And before we knew it, we were gaining altitude. But this wasn't like any other trail I was on before. After a short drive on what looks like any typical trail through the forest, the trail started to get looser and looser and the debris started to get bigger and bigger. And that wasn't the only thing changing. The surrounding forest thinned out as the floor grew more lush. This was only further exemplifying the huge altitude increase that we were doing, and we were just getting started. I don't know how exactly far up we're up this trail, but it's actually starting to change from like the kind of cedars around to it's now kind of more of a like alpine um, area. It's pretty cool. So we've gained a lot of altitude. I can also tell we've gained a lot of altitude by the fact that actually my water bottle, when I opened it, um, was com or ha pressurized. I've hit my bumper a couple times, um, and we actually pulled the um, the AFR sensor uh, in the um, car because it was dying and choking the car. But yeah, so far so good. The footage doesn't do the climbs justice. They were loose, rutted, and very steep. At some points, I was unsure if the Forester was even going to make it. All I could do was put it in first and climb as slow as possible, trying not to break traction. 
As we climbed, the switchbacks got shorter and shorter and the trees got more and more sparse. Till they just disappeared as we came onto the ridge line. But our journey was far from over. The fire tower was still 100 meters of above us, and to get to it, we had a ridge line to cross. Stop there though. Next, we had the snow to deal with. The gladiator, with its extremely slow crawled gears, was the only one that was able to make it across the snow. The rest of us had to sneak around the side of the snowbank. And I, well, I got stuck in it. But with a little bit more momentum, I made it through the second bank, no problem. While the final push wasn't snow covered, it was still a challenge with its rough terrain and reverse switchback. Yep, we had to do a switchback in reverse. In the end, it was worth it. The views from up top were amazing, and it really showcased the amount of vertical we covered today. Well, we made it up after a long drive, and check out this view. We're at like a fire lookout tower, I guess it'd be, and we're on the top of a mountain with the Forester, which is pretty cool. It's definitely the hardest trail I've done, but it was definitely worth it, because look at that view. It is awesome. What's the saying? What comes up must come down, so that's what we're doing. We're heading back down. Um, got some really good photos up there. I'll pop them in right here, here, and here. Um, I'm trying out that wide angle again, and I think I got some really good stuff. Um, but what we're gonna be doing now is we're heading back down because, well, there's a thunderstorm, as the Kootenays are. You usually get some pretty nasty thunderstorms. That's what we're getting right now, just across the way. So we don't wanna be on the top of the mountain during a thunderstorm. And then, also, it is like mosquito heaven up there. I like had the heavy duty bug spray and it, they were still attacking pretty hard. So yeah, we're making a beeline back down the hill because also it's like two, so yeah. Coming back down the hill, we had gravity on our side, making it easy to get through the snow, but because of the rough terrain, still preventing us from gaining any speed. Just like when we did the switchbacks, we have now traffic on the road. And as you guys know, as you guys have been watching, this isn't a very big trail. So when you have head-on traffic, um, it's gonna get a little interesting. But it looks like the people in front of us kind of figured it out, so we'll see. But not a bad view to just sit and wait. Usually you'd be able to see way down the valley and can't see that, but Overall, this is such a sweet trail. I marked it on my map because it'd be cool to kind of come up here and go camping maybe. Um, or see Adrian. Adrian's always like, oh, my cross track's um, doing pretty good. So this would be a really good test for his cross track. We might have to do it sometime. We'll see, I'll show him some pictures and see if he's down, but. There's the traffic jam. And there's some more lightning or thunder. So good thing we're not standing on the top of the mountain. That's never a good thing when you've got um, storm clouds like that. Again, first gear proved to be not low enough in the Forester, requiring me to be on the brakes almost all the way down. But then again, I can't complain too much because the views were just as good coming down as they were going up.
there we go. So we made it down, the Forester made it down, and I am so impressed in the Forester. That was actually some pretty, as I said, difficult terrain, actually the hardest I've done in the Forester, um, but it performed great. The struts are the new suspension coilover. Flex, or the amount of articulation was awesome. Really glad I removed the sway bars because those sway bars would have been a hindrance on that trail, but I was able to get a pretty good angle and still um, keep traction in some of those really weird angles. So now that we are back down the trail, I think we're gonna head back down to the main road and then go to a different lake and um, go find a camp spot. I don't think we're camping on the beach, but we're gonna be camping near another lake. So let's hit the road. Back on the road, we were able to make good time on the asphalt, and when the road turned to gravel, keep up the momentum. But it wasn't long before the clouds that we saw on the top of the mountain opened up above us and poured. It was on and off for the next hour or so, where it rained some of the biggest raindrops I have ever seen. The drive though was amazing. Even though it wasn't an off-road trail, we were able to just enjoy the cruise through beautiful British Columbia. And we made it through the rain and to our camp spot. Check this out, it's kind of like a meadows and there's actually a lake that away, another lake. BC has lakes all over, so we're at a completely different area, completely different lake. We were, we came from that way and there's, we came through that storm. Now it's a nice clear day. So we're gonna set up camp in this little area, another free little campground here in BC, but really nice like tall trees and nice little meadowy area. So I'm gonna set up the tent right there. <laughs> and yeah, um, have some dinner. When compared to where we started today, it's like we ended up on a whole different planet. Here, it was so lush as if we were in the rainforest. And while you couldn't see the birds, you could definitely hear them as they sang all evening long. With the storm now gone and the skies cleared up, we were able to watch the sunset set over the lake and across the meadows before heading to bed for the night. As you can see, the temperature dropped pretty quickly after the sunset, which is kind of nice after the 30 37 that we've been dealing with. So we had a nice cool evening, which is nice because as I said, we've been dealing with 30, 37 and um, 20 plus in the evening. Anyways, that is gonna be the end of today's overlanding adventure. We still got one more full day with some more of the trails. Not exactly sure what that looks like. As you guys know, I am along for the ride. I don't know where we're going. I don't even know where we are right now. I know we're some, in somewhere southern BC, but that's pretty much it. So just enjoying the ride, enjoying the time. That trail we did today was probably my favorite thing we've done in the Forester so far. It was amazing and so much fun. Really got to test the limits of the Forester and I was pleasantly surprised. I gotta say, the new suspension did amazing. The wheels on Boring from Austin did amazing. So, could have asked for a better day. Anyways, that is gonna be the end of day three. I think this is day three, yeah. I hope you're enjoying the series as much as I am enjoying doing it, and that is going to be it. So, until next episode, peace out, and stay humble. <laughs>